Welcome. You've been brought here for a purpose. You will receive knowledge. You will receive wisdom. Mostly, you'll learn how to make this cool 3D hologram effect. It's, I think it's pretty cool. Let's get started. The first thing you need to know about achieving this effect is that your raw footage is very important. You need to create a situation where as you move towards the camera, your face actually gets brighter. Here's what I did. I used one of the lights I used when I'm filming this video. I set it up in my closet and I used a pillowcase to block the majority of the light coming from it so that when I was against the back wall, I was much darker and as I moved forward, I moved into the area the pillowcase wasn't covering so my face became brighter. Once you have footage you're happy with, you can load it into DaVinci Resolve and get started. So here I am in DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna drag that footage into my media pool. So we're going to right click in our media pool, go to timelines, create new timeline, name this, come down to use custom settings, format, and change whatever our default timeline is to 480 by 270 and change the timeline frame rate to match whatever footage we recorded. This might be confusing, but that's because we're gonna go about creating this effect in two major chunks. We're gonna take our footage, shrink it down, apply a few filters, and then export that to a clip we can pull back into Fusion to create our main effect. This will help us save processing power. The particle effect we're gonna be using can tax systems, so we wanna do everything we can to keep the power requirements low. But after we have this timeline, we are going to drag in our footage so we can view it on the timeline. If you have multiple takes like I do, this is where you can review the footage and trim it down to exactly what you want to use for your effect. I can see just by my waveform that I have two separate takes here. So I'm going to come in and trim that to just that second take that I know I want to use. And then with our playhead over our footage, we are going to open the Fusion page. And the important thing to know about Fusion is that it will always pull in clips at their full resolution. So even though we have a really small timeline, it pulls in this full 4K clip. Another major reason we're doing all this processing on the footage first. So with our media in selected, we are going to add a color corrector node and then a glow node. And you'll see that there are two main glow options. We are gonna choose the second with this little magic wand. In the color corrector, we are going to bring down the saturation, show it's black and white, pull up the gain, and then pull up the contrast as well. And we're gonna find a medium we like and try to ignore that pillow in the background for now. And then in the glow, you're going to pull down the shine threshold, pull down the spread a little bit and then colorize it with this color picker down here. And then I'm just gonna jump around my timeline to make sure, especially when I'm close to the camera, none of these hot spots are way too overblown. And that's all the processing we're gonna do on this end. I'm gonna go back to my timeline on the edit page, navigate to the delivery page. And I know our timeline was already pretty small, but I'm actually gonna bring this down even smaller to 320 by 180. We're gonna pick a destination and export that footage. Once that is done exporting, we're gonna bring that export back into Resolve into our media pool and create another new timeline. And this timeline we will want at the full resolution for whatever we want our final output to be. And so for this effect, we're gonna pull in the fusion composition effect in the effects library onto our timeline and increase that duration to the link of that previous exported video. Then we're gonna open that in the fusion page and you will see the only thing we have is this media out node, but we can drag from our media pool that export video down into our workspace. So we know this is the footage we want to reference, but we're going to let this sit for now and start to build out our particle node tree. And the three nodes we're going to use for this are P, image emitter. Connected to that, we are going to have P, custom. And then just like all particle systems, we need P, render. But before I connect my footage, I'm going to hop into these and change some important settings. In P, image emitter, we're going to pull down the density to 0.3 on both X and Y. And then we're gonna come over to style, changes from point to blob, come to size settings, and we're gonna pull down this size to 0 0.01. After setting those, we can connect the out of this media in to our P image emitter and pull a P render on our preview. And you'll instantly be able to see that it has taken that image 
and created a field of particles that we can actually zoom in and out and pivot around in Z space that is textured and colored to look like our footage, but it's still only a single plane of particles. To change that, we're gonna use the power of the P custom node. You're gonna be blown away at how quickly this powerful node can change the look of this scene. We're gonna open the P custom node and navigate over to particle. And here you'll see that we have all these options for our particles, things like the position, velocity, and rotation. And you'll start to see a little of the code that this is working off of. We're gonna be looking at position Z. That is the position of each particle in Z space moving towards or away from the camera. And check out how simple this is in P custom. I'm gonna delete that PZ and I'm going to press G for green. And instantly it will distort this image. But if you look, you'll see that what it's actually doing is it is moving particles towards the camera, the brighter the luminance value for the green channel is. That's what this G stands for. If I were to change this to red, would get a little bit different of an outcome. But you'll see right now, by default, this effect is very exaggerated. So I'm going to select that text box again and add a divided by two. And you'll see that it will pull back how far it pulls those pixels, but that is still pulling those pixels, the brighter the luminance value of their corresponding pixel. But as we scrub, you'll see all of a sudden the pixels disappear. And that is because I forgot a very important setting in our P image emitter. All particles in Resolve have a lifespan. And by default, this emitter lifespan is 100, but we wanna make sure they reach the end of the composition. So that lifespan needs to be longer than the entire timeline. So I'm gonna add. Here's something I ran to in this project. The footage I exported is in 30 frames per second, but I want my final product to be in 60 frames per second. If I were just on the edit page, I could drop that footage on the timeline and it would automatically double the frames necessary to stretch it out to that time. So it would play back in normal speed at 60 frames per second. So to get my footage to play back correctly, I need it to last twice as long. So I added this time speed node and pulled the speed down to 0.5. Now to help focus the viewer's attention on my face, I'm gonna go back to my media in and add an ellipse node. I'm gonna increase that so that when I move close to the camera later on in the video, I am still visible and I'm going to increase the soft edge of that as well. And then if we go back to our P render, you'll notice as the image fades out, the transparency of our particles goes down as well. At this point, you can go back and start messing with some of those settings that we set up when we set up our particle node tree. So I'm gonna go back into P image emitter and actually pull up this X density to 0.35 on each. And you'll see in our preview, but that will increase the particles on each horizontal and vertical line. I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm gonna move forward, but you'll notice this P render node, we cannot connect right to our media out, which we need if we wanna get back to the edit page. For that, we need to select our P render node and add a renderer 3D node. And this we can connect to our media out, but if we do that and then preview the media out, you'll see that we have nowhere near the perspective we want for this effect. So before this 3D renderer, we are going to add a 3D merge. And in that merge, we're gonna add a 3D camera. And what we wanna preview to set this up is the merge 3D. The effect we're going for is one where the camera has a very wide field of view, but is very close to the subject, in this case, the particles. That way, the motion of those particles in Z space as they move towards the camera will be exaggerated. I'm on a fairly wide lens now. So you'll see that if I move my hand towards the camera, it'll get disproportionately large. That's what we're trying to achieve with these particles. So with this camera selected, we're gonna pull it back in Z space until it's just a little bit in front of our particles. And then we're going to ramp up this angle of view. And we're gonna reposition the camera just a bit and scrub in our timeline to see how that feels. I think this is close to what we're looking for. So I'm gonna go back to the edit page and let this render out so we can preview it in full time. And another word of warning, especially here, you will see how intensive this effect really is. This is taking a while on my system, which granted is not the best, but you should know going in, this effect will take a while to preview, it will take a while to render. This effect is playing back fine, so I'm actually going to pull up my source footage in the preview and pull the audio down to sync with that. Then if we play back, we should have audio as well. Welcome. You've been brought here for a purpose. And that's pretty cool. And I also tossed a few audio effects on the track, like changing the pitch and a little bit of reverb to really sell the effect. Mm -hmm. 
As you saw, there are a number of different settings that you can play with to make this look exactly like you want it to. I think this one effect has a lot of flexibility. And when you think about the fact that we're only changing one small thing on that P custom node, the possibilities really seem endless. If you create a look you think is really cool, let me know in the comments down below or find me on Twitter. And if you want more videos like this, diving into DaVinci Resolve, be sure to subscribe. Thanks, I'll see you next time.